Pierre was charged with excitement as anxious, expectant faces searched the skies for the first glimpse of the great silver bird that would bring their hero to Jamaican soil for the first time. Members of a local cult, the Rastafarians, were easily distinguished by their long beards and unshorn locks, and who worshipped this figure as a deity were present in full force. tumultuous welcome ever given to any visiting or local celebrity, His Imperial Majesty Haile Selassie I, Emperor of Ethiopia, arrived. The crowd erupted into a frenzy of rejoicing as they broke through the lines of soldiers and police and surged out onto the tarmac, eager to engulf the Emperor with their affection. had to be abandoned as the avalanche of men, women, and children swept away all semblance of order. Ethiopia, a monarchy on the eastern side of Africa, has been governed since 1930 by Haile Selassie, whom history records as being a direct descendant of King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba. Jamaica was among the places visited by His Imperial Majesty on his tour of the Caribbean area. Huge crowds jostled for choice vantage points all along the route in the hope of seeing the emperor. also awaited his arrival. His Imperial Majesty laid a wreath in memory of Jamaicans who gave their lives in both world wars. The tomb of the noted Jamaican patriot Marcus Garvey was also visited by the emperor. The royal party next drove to Jamaica House, the official residence of the prime minister, the right honorable Sir Alexander Bustamante. Alexander and Lady Bustamante by the acting Prime Minister, the Honourable Donald Sangster. The National Stadium was the scene of the civic welcome extended by the government of Jamaica to His Imperial Majesty.
minister read the address of welcome. Your Imperial Majesty, I have the great honor to express to you, on behalf of the government and people of Jamaica, a most warm and sincere welcome. This, your first visit to Jamaica, is for us, your Majesty, a most important and significant event. We have long hoped for this occasion, and your presence with us today is assuredly, Your Majesty, a high point in our history. Mr. Eustace Byrd, one of the two KSAC commissioners, presented the keys of the city to the Emperor. His Imperial Majesty and his party were treated to displays staged by the military and young schoolgirls. was King's House, the official residence of His Excellency the Governor General, Sir Clifford Campbell. His Imperial Majesty was introduced to many dignitaries and members of the Rastafarian cult in full regalia. presented gold medallions to the Rastafarians. Then it was our turn for gift giving. At a formal reception at King's House, the government of Jamaica presented gifts to the emperor and to his grandchildren who accompanied him on the tour. by officials of state and the military, he was escorted across the lawns of King's House. There, on a balcony, he settled back to enjoy a Jamaican concert under the stars. symbols of mass bands heralded the opening of another session of Parliament at Gordon House. This session would be addressed by His Imperial Majesty. saluting days for the playing of the national anthems of Ethiopia and Jamaica. He was then ushered into the council. 
council chamber. The emperor's address to the assembly and people of Jamaica was in his native Amharic and was translated by a member of his party. I always wish to come and visit Jamaica. Now, thank God, this wish of mine has been fulfilled. Upon arrival to Jamaica, I have seen more than had been expected. I have seen the progress of the people, and I have seen their determination to march forward in unity towards greater progress. I have also witnessed personally the extent of the feeling of the Jamaican people to the Ethiopian people. Again, I wish to take this opportunity of expressing my thanks to the government and people of Jamaica for the fraternal reception that was accorded to me. Among the academic institutions visited by His Imperial Majesty were Jamaica College, the College of Art, Science and Technology, and Myco College. And here at Myco College, one of Jamaica's oldest teacher training institutions, he was met by the principal, Mr. Glenn Owen. Escorted inside, he was invited to sign the visitor's book. And a gift was presented to him by one of the pupils. The University of the West Indies is one of the institutions of which Jamaicans are justly proud. It covers 650 sprawling acres at the foot of the Long Mountains in St. Andrew, and it has recently been granted full independent status by the University of London. Members of the faculty, student body, and prominent citizens gathered to witness the ceremony in which the honorary degree of Doctor of Laws will be conferred on His Imperial Majesty. Sherlock, Vice-Chancellor of the University, conferred the degree. The Emperor's reception for the Governor-General and people of Jamaica was held at the Sheraton Kingston Hotel. The atmosphere was cheerful and informal as Jamaicans from all walks of life chatted and joked together and raised friendly glasses in a toast to the continued health and happiness of His Imperial Majesty. As a personal gift, the Emperor entrusted to the government the funds to erect a school. At the chosen site on Payne Avenue, Hundreds gathered to witness the stone-laying ceremony. In appreciation of the Emperor's generosity, the government decided to offer a scholarship to an Ethiopian student tenable at the University of the West Indies. The foundation stone was laid by the Emperor himself. placard-bearing Rastafarians swarmed all over the Kingston railway station as they awaited the arrival of the emperor. This was the beginning of a journey by rail across the island to Montego Bay Airport, from which the emperor and his party would depart.
Americans stopped briefly at Spanish Town, but the vast multitude, carried away by emotion and enthusiasm, broke out in a wild free-for-all in which several persons were injured. several stops at various towns along the route. Some of these included Denby, Williamsfield, Magatee, and Montpelier. There he met both prominent citizens and humble folk. He also saw something of our rich heritage of folk dancing. was given the military honors that were thwarted on his arrival at the Palisados airport by the overzealous welcome. Here, strong detachments of soldiers and police kept the huge crowds at bay. of our island and engulfed people with an enthusiasm 